Hey YouTube, this is Wes Stamp with JWS Repair Service. Uh, today we're going to be doing the top end work on the Polaris 500 motor. Uh, this will consist of piston rings, a uh, new cylinder, uh, installing the cylinder head, uh, valves, uh, well the valves are already in it, but installing the cylinder head and just buttoning the engine up. Okay, here is our Polaris uh, 500 bottom end, uh, all assembled and ready to go. Uh, we're just ready to install the piston and rings uh, and the and the new cylinder here. So uh, I'll be showing you that. Now, uh, if you need to see how to put the bottom end together, uh, if I remember, I'll try to put the link in the description below uh, showing that procedure. Uh, if not, you can look through the videos on the channel and you'll you'll find it there. But I'm going to try to remember to put the link in there. But anyway, so here we go. Let's get started. Now, first off, we want it, We need to get the rings onto the piston. So here's the new piston. Uh, it's a Wiseco piston, and we will take it out of the box. Here are the rings. Here's the piston pin. Here's the piston itself in a cool little fabric bag. And most importantly, the uh, the circlips uh, for the piston pin. Never reuse circlips. Okay, there's the piston. And you can see it's race ready. Uh, don't know why, but it is. But we're gonna we're gonna peel that label off because uh, we really don't want that label in there. I would have preferred they really didn't do that, but okay. I've never seen Wiseco do anything like that before, but uh, apparently it's something they do now. But not the uh, not the greatest thing ever. All right, let's get a little brake cleaner and clean that off of there. I don't I don't want that on there. Let's spray that. And then we can clean our piston off properly. For whatever reason it was, they wanted to put a sticker on it to show me it was race ready, but I don't think it's race ready anyway. It's going in a Ranger, so it's fast enough. All right. So the first thing we want to do is install our rings. I'm going to open those up. And you'll have a few different styles of ring here. Uh, this one that's all bent up. Let me turn this angle this a little bit. Okay. This one, <clears throat> excuse me, this one that's all bent looking at everything. This is the oil scraper ring. And it has two little really thin rings that go above and below it so but we need to stagger the gaps on all of them so what I like to do this is the arrow that shows front if you can see that so that'll go this way this will be installed in here this way with the arrow pointing to the front so we're gonna take this oil ring where it's split here and we're gonna set that in just like that Okay, so our gap is, our gap in the ring is right there. Now, it's really important to make sure that you don't, need a little, shed a little light on the subject, that you don't, uh, that doesn't overlap itself. Sometimes they'll want to overlap like it just did right there. But make sure you've got a gap there, okay? You're going to take your little scraper ring, the above and below the ring, there's the gap. I'll put the gap right in the middle right there. So I'm going to stagger these over to the side. This one on that side. Like so. And they usually color the end of where the, the, the scraper ring actually is. So, uh, But this one they didn't. But I can see that the gap is about right there. If I look really, really close, it's hard to see. 
Okay, but anyway, we got this one staggered, this groove staggered here. Now we're going to take the other thin one, and we're going to put its gap over here. So the gap for it will be over here. One of those goes, goes above and one goes below the oil scraper. So if you can see that clearly, you can see that we've got the scraper in the middle and the two other rings, the small, the thin rings on the top with the gap staggered. Now, we're going to flip the piston around this way. Our second and compression ring are going to be completely opposite of that one. So, uh, if you look at the ring, you'll see on one side it has some writing. This has a little N on it. That's going to be the upside. Now, the difference between a compression ring and a second ring is this is a square ring, and you'll see it's just an iron ring. There's nothing special about it. This one, you'll see, has a chrome coating on it and, it, and it looks, and it's kind of a copper color. It looks different. That's going to be your compression ring. So we'll take the plain ring. It doesn't matter where you put your gaps as long as they stagger. We're going to put the compression ring, or the second ring right there, start it in the groove, walk it around. And they make tools for doing this and all kinds of special fancy smancy stuff. I've never used any of that uh, ever. If you're just careful, you don't need that stuff. Uh, but it's just a matter of, you know, take your time and do it, do it carefully. Okay, there is the second ring in there. Now we're going to turn that gap over here. And we're going to take our compression ring, find the mark. Okay, there's the mark right there. The mark goes up. If I didn't mention that before. That's why you look for the mark. The mark goes up towards the top of the piston. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to put that ring in, slide it around, and there we go. There's a new piston with piston rings. And since this goes this way, it'll be installed here. I'm going to install the, the cylinder and everything from this side because I've got to get the cam chain and stuff through it. So I'm going to put this clip in right now. That way all I have to do is slide the pin in and put the other clip in. So I'm going to put this clip in now to save myself some trouble. So we'll open the clips. The clips are really, really strong. And uh, if you can do one easy, you know, by not having it where you're trying to you're stuck with it in the, the rod, you can't really get to it, then by all means do it. So right now, let's see, not the greatest angle here. Let's try this a little bit better. Maybe this will be better. Okay. We're going to take this. Now there is a little notch that's cutting all power sports pistons. Do not put the gap of the ring in the notch. That gap is there just so you can get behind this and get it out when you need to disassemble. So what I normally do is I put it absolutely opposite of the, the groove. Uh, well, let me see. Let me get it. Let me move the camera a little bit more. Make sure we're putting it in the right side. Okay. Now we're going to push it in. Take it like so. Here's the, the ring. Here's the gap of the ring. We're going to push that in opposite of where the gap is. And roll it in there. As I'm picking up. And I meant to get my special little screwdriver over here. And I forgot. We're going to push this down into that groove, and then we can actually, uh, golly, it's hard doing this where you can sit. Right, I'm going to, I'm, I'm lifting this up with my finger, and you can hear that pop. Okay, so that clip is in there. It's fully seated in the groove, and it's the, it's seated exactly where it needs to be. So. Got lucky on that one and it went in pretty easy. Okay, now we're going to move up to the cylinder. I'm going to turn this bottom end. Okay. 
we're going to take the piston pin, open the package. Always use a new piston pin as well. Most piston kits come with them. Uh, if you order it from Polaris, it should come as a kit as well. But I have seen some aftermarket pistons that actually are just a piston and won't come with the pin or anything. It goes by application. But uh, just be aware, you do need to replace it each and every time. It's not an expensive product. It can certainly save you a lot of trouble. Now, we're just going to take the piston, grab the rod, slide the pin in, and slide the pin through. Okay? Just like that. Now, to save yourself a lot of heartbreak, take a rag, or a couple of rags, and put them in the crankcase, closing up the crankcase, before you try to put this clip in. Because inevitably, when you try to push this clip in, if it for any reason jumps out of place, it'll go right down inside there and you may or may not be able to get it out. Okay, we're ready to put the other clip in. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go opposite of the, the little removal tab or hole they put there. We're going to put the gap in our clip opposite side. We're going to work that ring in there. It's going to be a little more difficult this time since I can't get it all the way. I can't just shove it all the way through because the pin's in there. We're just going to gently walk this in like so and you will hear, I don't know if you heard that or not, but you can definitely hear the clip when they go in. So if, if you're right here, you'll hear that snap where it really went in good. So you'll know that it's in there and it's all the way seated. So right now we're going to check all of our ring gaps, make sure they're good, nothing moved. Okay. That all looks good. So let's move this. And then here's our cylinder. Uh, this is a new cylinder. It's an aftermarket cylinder. Uh, it's made by Nietzsche. Now I will tell you that if you buy this by Nietzsche, this fitting does not come in the cylinder. Uh, this is a press fit fitting. Uh, big time interference fit. Uh, this is not fun to get out. But you will have to remove it because Polaris does not sell it by itself anymore. If you buy the cylinder from Polaris, it already has this fitting installed. But with an aftermarket cylinder, this fitting won't be in there. So before you buy an aftermarket cylinder, make sure you have the ability to remove this fitting. And basically what it's going to take is a torch, a lot of heat, and a quick hand. Because you're going to have to heat this thing up to the point to where you can work this fitting and get it out. Then when you go to put it back in, you got to be quick too. You've got to heat the new cylinder, shove this thing in as fast as you can. Helps to put this fitting in the freezer. But if you don't do it to get it out, you've got to heat it all. So it's, it's a little sketchy. You can damage some stuff. Uh, don't break this fitting. So if you're not confident that you can get this fitting in and out, just buy the cylinder from Polaris because it'll come with it. Because if you buy the aftermarket cylinder that doesn't have this, and I haven't seen any aftermarket cylinders that did, uh, yes, it uh, saves you a lot of money, but if you don't have this fitting, it's not going to do you any good if you can't get it out. So just keep that in mind. Now, what we're going to do is put a little bit of engine oil on the rings. I'm just going to coat the rings with some engine oil. I don't know if you could see that or not. I think my arm was in the way. We're just going to coat that with some oil. Let's move it around. We just don't want it, want it to go into the cylinder dry. It'll make it easier to compress the rings and guide through. Throw the piston over that. And we're going to set it right there like that. Now, here comes the fun part. Take the cylinder, 
I'm going to start the chain in there and then we're going to gently try to there's a taper on the cylinder so we're going to try to use it to help us compress these rings if they'll start just right so I I actually end up starting it a little bit at an angle to help it with the uh, with the compression of the ring so I'm going to work that down and you may have to get in here with the screwdriver or something and press that ring to get it just right on there to get it to slide into the cylinder because it's going to be a tight fit and it is a very tight fit And I'm just using my fingers right now and my fingernails and I will take that with a grain of salt because that went down on there and it's normally not that easy so just be aware that was a that was a welcome fluke that time so I'm happy with that all right so we've got our cylinder set down we've got our chain coming out It's important to keep this chain tight because I had an issue with it when I was building the bottom end that uh, I was putting the alternator or the stator back in it and that chain actually fell off the uh, little sprocket down in the bottom. So what I did was just uh, zip tied it to the, uh, to the one uh, cam chain guide here, uh, which if you need to replace cam chain, you should replace these guides. But I was able to get a hold of that and tighten it up to keep it from falling off of that bottom sprocket because that's a that's a bad day when it does that. So, all right, so that's all together. I'm going to turn this a bit, and there are four bolts that are down inside here. I can't really show you those. Uh, so, my, well, I can show you the bolts, but if you took your engine apart, you already know. But we're going to put a little bit of oil on these bolts on the thread so that we get a good torque. Well that one well this one and try to be careful with the oil on these bolts because you are putting this into a water jacket so any excess oil and stuff you get in here in this water passage all the way around this is going to be in the coolant system so I mean, oil them, but don't just glob it all over the place. Try to keep it right where you need it to be. All right, that takes a 12 millimeter, 12 point socket. Let me go grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, I found my socket and made it back. This is a 12 point, uh, 12 millimeter socket. This is what you'll have to have uh, to install those. But if you took them out, you already know that. So, boy, it's weird looking backwards. But anyway, that's what you're going to need to get these in. The torque on these is 46 pounds, so what we're going to do first is put the two small bolts in the side of this cylinder just to hold it steady uh, while we get these torqued down. And those are 8 millimeter. And here's that. Now on standard stuff that Polaris doesn't have a torque spec on, they just got a, uh, a spec for the range that it is, and it's 62. I'm going to set it at 70 inch-pounds. So for, because they'll go by the bolt size, like these are 6 millimeter. They take an 8 millimeter head, but it's a 6 millimeter thread. And I'm going to set that at you know, 70 inch-pounds. That's their standard uh, torque for things that don't have a actual spec. They'll just say, you know, six millimeter bolts, eight millimeter bolts, ten things like that. So basically, it's just snug. But anyway, all right. So we got that taken care of. Now I'm going to run down these uh, jug bolts uh, as soon as I can find the extension. There it is. I'm just going to run these down. So they're just touching the, the cylinder.
and then I will have my lovely assistant come over to help hold this engine because the torque on these is 46 foot pounds which is uh, fairly stout so you if your engine is not in your frame like this one now mind you you could put a top end on with the engine in the frame so if you just need to build a top end on this uh, depending on what it is if it's not a forward if it's a Ranger you should be able to do this with the engine still in there but uh, this one had a a major malfunction it had a it lost the oil pump uh, a lot of wear on the cam chain gears the cam chain itself uh, which necessitated pulling the entire engine and rebuilding the whole thing so uh, but if you're just putting a top end on then you definitely wouldn't have to pull it out so if you've got the thing mounted in the frame you could torque these bolts no problem but since I don't have anything holding this engine it's just sitting here we'll have to call over our lovely assistant to help us so these bolts are down lovely assistant uh, this side I guess okay lovely assistant thank you could you hold that please all right thank you all right we're going to torque these in a crisscross pattern which means I'm going to torque the upper right there we go the lower left the upper left and the lower right mm. all right there we go let me go back and double check I always like to go back and just make sure Okay, those are tied. Thank you, lovely assistant. Okay, now we need to install the, uh, the one cam chain guide. Since we've already got the movable guide in there, we're going to install, this is the stationary guide. We're going to put it in there, and it fits down in a little pocket that is down inside there. And... Can you see while I'm doing that? Well, I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's a, a little groove that this fits in at the bottom. Now, clearly it fits into the cylinder here at the top, but you want to make sure that it's down there in the bottom all the way. So that's why I was blocking the camera view because I had to make sure that was in there. All right. We'll take our head gasket. Slide it over all of this. And we're going to be cutting that zip tie here in just a moment. But for now, we're going to put the gasket on upside down. Just because I can. Does this one have... No? It doesn't say up or down. Sometimes they do, but... I can tell that's the wrong way because uh, I couldn't get the, over the, the pin. So, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I won't fit over the pins. Alright. Now we'll go get the head... We'll cut the zip tie and release the chain, but I'm going to slide the camshaft into the uh, head just to hold that chain, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with the cylinder head, and we're ready to install that. So I'm going to keep a magnet here on a stick close because I'm going to have to cut the zip tie that's holding the chain and remove it so I'm gonna have to hang on to this so that it stays on the cylinder so we're gonna turn the piston till it's all the way up at TDC which is top dead center hold it like that I'm gonna take the cylinder head put it through slide our cam back through Make sure our guides are in the right spot, the gasket's in the right spot, and all of that. So, there we go. We're going to put that like so. Now, that all is 
out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead, take my two small bowls. Those aren't the right ones. I need to go get the head bolts and stuff. Let's move this angle up a little bit. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and unfortunately, uh, I did not see uh, that the camera had gone dead. So the torque pattern, I didn't get to show you that, uh, and the steps that it takes to properly uh, torque the head on this 500 engine. Uh, it's a multi-step process. Uh, I'll, I'll, I've already done a couple of the steps, but I'm going to recap and tell you what I did and how to do it. Okay, in a crisscross pattern, starting here, or really anywhere you want to, whatever is best for you, but I started here, torque to 22 foot-pounds, here, 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 and here. Then reset the torque wrench to 51 foot-pounds, and torque here, 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 here. Then the next step is to loosen each bolt 180 degrees or half a turn. It'll be here, 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 here. Now I already have loosened, tightened the two steps and loosened this one 180 degrees. So now we're going to loosen this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to try to do it with a torque wrench that shows the degrees, but a half a turn is, is fairly easy to see. But we're going to go ahead and try to be all official here if I can do this. Uh, yeah, let's try it like this. All right. And that's not telling me anything other than that's a half a turn. All right, let's set this back to degrees. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a better way to go. Okay, now we'll go to this one. Uh, move that over. This does take a 12-point, uh, 14-millimeter socket, so it's fairly easy to find a place where you'd be straight up and down or straight across. We're going to loosen this one 180. And let's see if it actually shows it this time. Uh, it doesn't. So, But anyway, like I said, it's easy uh, to see where 180 degrees is since it's just a half a turn. So we'll... Let's see, is that about... Yeah, a little bit more past uh, the bottom. And we'll go the same thing here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is loosen a half turn again. Now let me try this. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, we're going to go a half turn again. So we're going to go up here. Make sure we're in a line. Half a turn. Here. Half a turn. Here, half turn. And these are getting pretty loose by this point, so. And this one half a turn. For whatever reason, the degrees are not working on this torque wrench. Okay, now we're going to tighten in the same pattern to 11 foot-pounds. So let me set that up. Okay, but we're going to use the same pattern. So we're going to tighten this. And 11 is pretty light. There it is. Okay. Now we're going to turn in the same pattern 90 degrees, so a quarter of a turn. So we're going to set this. Uh, let's see if we can get it straight up. Okay, we're going to go 90 degrees right there. And let me just turn this off because I don't actually need it to do anything right this minute. Okay. Just so it doesn't do all the beeping and stuff. Alright, I'm going to do this one this way. If I can not hit the light. Okay, so it's a little bit... Huh? Alright, so I'm going to go 90. We'll take this one. 
that's about straight so we'll go just a little bit past the bottom and 90 and then our last one we're gonna go 90 degrees again okay now for the last torque step we're gonna go 90 degrees again and I'm going to though this is not going to be very accurate we're just going to go ahead and for giggles and just see how tight that actually is when it does it but you shouldn't tighten it that way uh, you should go by the spec so 90 degrees so we're going to go 90 degrees on that one that was 55 so what that's showing we go 90 degrees on this one that was 67 a little bit of variation there we'll go 90 on this one 62 and finally 90 on this one 57 and a half well that's the way Polaris wants it so that's the way they got it now that torques the head bolts down exactly the way they're supposed to be. So now we're gonna move on to timing uh, the head, but uh, don't forget these two little 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts in here. These are tightened to 70, uh, 71 inch pounds. So I've already tightened these, but I'm gonna go ahead and just confirm that. Okay, now, to time this thing up, we need to put, I just put a couple of bolts in the uh, the mag cover. Let me tilt this down a little bit so I can show you that. Okay. Put just a couple of bolts in this mag cover in case I need to rotate the crankshaft. Get a better angle on that. Uh, and what you want to see is the TDC mark uh, up on top. And I'm going to show you what that looks like down in this hole, but I've got to have another light to see it. So we're going to take the camera loose and we will show you uh, if you look in there just right you should be able to see let's see can I zoom in can I get any light in the hole okay there's the T mark and you'll see that little V shape uh, tab that's made into the case and it's not going to focus that tight. All right. Well, I think you can see that's the T mark. There are several marks on the flywheel. Be sure you have the one that says T. That is top dead center, and that's where we want to set our timing. So let me zoom back out, put the camera back up. All right, and now we've got the, the piston and the crankshaft setting at TDC. Now we're going to want a preliminary uh, align the camshaft and the preliminary timing on the camshaft is this pin that is right here will be up directly up in a straight line and we'll see if we set it up like this uh, and move the camera angle a little bit and actually it will set like that if I keep it on that wrench so all right sit up like that this will be a better way to demonstrate we'll set it up like that and you can see the uh, the pin don't fall okay you can see the alignment pin right here on top it's uh, right there there's a hole in the cam sprocket that goes there so that's our preliminary so let me grab the new cam sprocket which I have sitting here right here okay now this is once again a Polaris part I buy it through my commercial supplier it's coming through McDonald but you can actually see the part number here and if you can read that it's a 308 4914 the cam sprocket the upper cam sprocket so we've got our new chain on there we built the bottom end in a previous video uh, we built the did the valve job replaced the valves and everything in a previous video now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty we're going to time up 
the uh, the valve timing once I get this out of the package and we're going to get uh, get the rest of the engine buttoned up now on this gear you will see obviously the notch this is where the pin goes that I showed you in the camshaft and you've got two dots up here the timing is a little bit wide on a Polaris uh, there it just really needs to be between those dots uh, as far as straight up and down goes so they give you some leeway there let me show you this the right way see if you can see it maybe I'm doing this backwards so bear with me but you've got your two little dots there hopefully you can see that now we're going to slide the cam chain back place the sprocket in here as best we can and these are going to be somewhat there's not a lot of slack in here uh, which is good because everything's new but even on a worn one there's not a lot of slack so you kind of got to hold your mouth just right and work the chain around but I can already tell that that is going to be off by a tooth so if I pull that up it's good we're wasting our time so we're gonna back this off a tooth I'm gonna try to hold this we're gonna move one tooth that way by pulling a loop in the chain set it up walk it around like so and I think I got two loops because now we're the other way so let's back it let's go back the other way and I think I got two links there instead of one kinda hard to do but there we go there's just one and we're gonna just walk that linkage around uh, I need to hold the cam from the other side because I don't have the pin in it to hold it but uh, as you can see that lines up the timing mark you can see it's straight up and down the pin is straight up and down everything is in line the way the way it's supposed to be so let me move this get a little bit better angle on that nope wrong way all right how about like that okay now you can see it now we can go ahead and install the cam bolts but we're going to leave them kind of loose right this minute because we still need to put the tensioner in uh get the rocker box on here and things like that so we don't want to bind that up so that we get any in any problems there but we're going to go ahead and loosely put those bolts in we'll tighten them to torque once we get the tensioner in here and we're not having running the problem of maybe jumping a tooth so let me grab those bolts and stuff and i'll be right back Okay, I've got the cam sprocket bolts now. We're just going to put these in. Like I said, I'm just going to tighten these up hand tight. Uh, what like I said, you don't want to, there's not, they're not that tight, but they're fairly tight, but you don't want to run the chance of uh, jumping a tooth uh, on the, the cam chain. So uh, we want to get the tensioner in there first and make sure that it is holding the chain properly but before we put the tensioner on you need to at least have these bolts tightened up finger tight just so that they don't fall off or it doesn't have a chance that the sprocket falls off okay. uh, we'll be right back in a moment okay I'm back and I've got the cam chain tensioner now to install this you need to take the center bolt out as I'm doing here be careful because it's got a spring in it. You're going to release this little locking tab here and press the plunger all the way in. Okay? Now we're going to take the gasket and we're going to place it in there with the tab, the little locking tab going up. So we're going to put it in there like this. We'll put the bolts in it. And we're going to torque those to the, well, if I can get this off, 71 inch pounds, uh, as are most of these six millimeter bolts, as you may have noticed. So uh, we're going to torque this to the same as the rest of them. Get that tightened up.
Okay. Then we'll go ahead and set the torque on them. Like so. And like so. Now, take your spring and the, the bolt and put them in there. And you'll see that it's going to be pretty tight because everything is new. So, we're going to push this in if we can not knock the motor over. Start that bolt and tighten it up. And you'll see that that chain had already, the tensioner had already moved over. It's automatic, so that's uh, it should automatically do that. Hence the term automatic. All right, and we'll just tighten this up. We'll just take it down to the typical 71. This is a little bit bigger bolt, but you don't need to get it just real tight anyway. I mean, it needs to be snug, but it's uh just holding that in there you just don't want it to leak it does have an o-ring on it so there we go our timing is set uh the cam chain is tight now now we can tighten the sprocket bolts which i'm going to do right now and those are 71 as well so we're going to tighten those up whoops I may have to hold it because our engine's trying to turn here. Let's back that up just a well. I can't back it up. I can still get this one while I've got it though. Okay, there's the torque on that one. And the torque on that one. So we'll just go and double check. We're good. We're good. And we're good. Alright. So that's got all of that in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the plug in the end of it uh, for the compression release so the cam will quit trying to walk out of here now. So uh, let me get this kind of set back up the way I had it. Like, well, like something. All right, well, anyway, that's in there. I just need to get my cover. And the bolt. This has an O-ring on it. Make sure that it's on there. Uh, make sure that your little uh, weight did not fall out. So that your, uh, this is a, a little centrifugal weight that when it's, the engine is running, it's fly, it spins out this way and releases the decompression. There's a little ball in the end of the camshaft, or in the middle of the camshaft, uh, that that acts on. So uh, be sure this is in there. There's not a lot of pressure on this spring. There's not supposed to be a lot of pressure on this spring. I want it to be fairly loose. It doesn't take much for it to get that little compression release to release, but obviously as soon as the engine starts, you're going to want compression. So. Uh, we'll put this cap back in, or the plug in the end of this that covers that, just to keep our camshaft from trying to walk out because this is that's the way this camshaft comes out. So if you're already to this point, you already know that's the way it came out. It only fits one way. So we'll go ahead and put this cap back in. And we will torque those bolts to the same torque at the 71 inch pounds. And we'll change our socket again, get the right one on there. And we will tighten this up. There we go. Okay. And this one. Alright, that's in good shape. Now let's turn this around just a little bit. So you can see what we're doing while I knock that off on the floor. Okay, now we've got our camshaft up here. Everything's installed here, our valve springs, chain, the head bolts have been torqued. What we need to do now is put the rocker shaft assembly and the rocker arms back in. But before we do that, we want to add just a little bit of molly paste to the lobes of the cam so that when it starts it's not 
going to be running dry because it's going to take a minute for oil to get up here. We don't need a whole bunch on there, uh, just a little bit like that, just so that those rocker arms have a little bit of a lubricated surface to uh, to run on. So, and this is obviously an old jar. It lasts me for a while. Uh, it's just Bell Ray uh, assembly lube with Molly paste in it. And it's basically all it is is a Molly paste. So a molybdenum, which is a tough word to say, but we'll say it anyway. All right. Now we will take our rocker assembly. and reinstall it. Now your exhaust has the single rocker arm but it pushes two valves. It's got the one pad and you have separate for your intake. We'll place those in there, line them up on the guide pins and turning it around Booker assembly. Just like that. We'll take our bolts and install those. And let me pick that up because that was one of those that I dropped. So, go ahead and put those in there. We'll snug this down and once again 71 inch pounds uh, for the torque on these as well. So, and then we will check our valve clearance. We'll just tighten this in a crisscross pattern uh, just because we can. 71, 71, 71, and 71. Now, the valves aren't too tight, but let's make sure that they're not too loose. So they the uh, factory clearance for these is six thousands. Uh, let's see, and there is six thousands, which is also 0 0.15 to five millimeter. So we've got the uh, the six thousands. You can see that, and the 0 0.152 millimeter. So we're going to check each one of these. That's actually pretty good. You want them to be a little, a little bit snug when they're in there, uh, but you don't want them to be just too loose. Now, those are loose, so we're going to adjust those. Okay, you're going to need a, a 10 millimeter socket and a flat blade screwdriver. And I have a special tool for this, which uh, the slot is here, and then the 10 millimeters here, which allows me to hold that while I tighten it. Uh, you can do it without that. I've done it for years without it. But uh, it does make it a little bit easier because sometimes the nut wants to turn and get a little bit tighter uh, when you go to tighten up the the nut. Or, or, when you go to tighten up the lock nut, the adjuster wants to get a little bit tighter. Usually they don't, but sometimes they do, and this makes it where this holds it at the same time. You can do the same operation with a box wrench and just a flat blade. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can do it that way. And you want to get those 
tighten these nuts down pretty dang tight because uh, they have been known to back off. So That's a little bit uh, too tight there. Back that off just a hair. Put our feeler gauge back in. Okay. That one's just a little bit tight. We're going to back this one off just a hair. I did not like the way that felt. All right, there we go. Okay. Now the feeler gauge goes in with a little bit of resistance, but not much. And the valves are adjusted. Well, let's go ahead and get this one. Let's get a little more resistance on that. That's a little bit on the loose side. <clears throat> well, I pulled the thing out that time. Okay. Okay. Now it's got a little bit of resistance on it. You want it just to have just a little bit of resistance so that it's a good tight adjustment. But not too tight. But not too loose. It's got to be Goldilocks just right. Okay, now that buttons all that up. Now all I need to do is install the valve cover, starter, a few other things. Let me get those items together. Okay, we're back. We're going to install our rocker box cover. So we're going to put our gasket on there and our clean cover and then I got all new bolts for this one because somebody had been into this engine before uh, and the customer uh, took my recommendation to replace the hardware properly. I don't know if you caught it or not but one of the cam sprocket bolts had actually been changed too but they changed it with, the, with a, a, a really good uh, uh, alternate bolt in there why they didn't just get the one from Polaris I don't know it looks like they just went to a hardware store but at least they got a good one on for this rocker cover they had all different head sizes these are supposed to be all eight millimeter heads and they had different lengths and different sizes and just kind of a pain so since we had to order a lot of parts for it anyway uh, we just went ahead and got the correct hardware from Polaris uh, so that we could put it back uh, the way it's supposed to be so uh, it just makes it a little a little less of a pain to uh, to work on it so that's why all these bolts look brand new because uh, well they are and we're just going to tighten this up as far as the torque pattern goes not really important on this uh, you could crisscross if you wanted to just for style points but it's really not going to make any difference for this but uh, this one had a gasket. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, once again, it's kind of like uh, a lot of the other stuff with Polaris. It varies from year to year. Uh, Honda does that as well on some of their engines, where sometimes they'll have a gasket, sometimes they don't, even on the same model. So, uh, if it has a gasket in your gasket kit, put it in there. If you're, if you're looking up parts online and you look at the breakdown, it shows a gasket, order it and put it in there. Uh, if it doesn't show a gasket, then uh, don't. But uh, like I said, this one did show a gasket, and the kit came with a uh, with a gasket in there, so we're going to use it. So we're going to go for style points here and go ahead and do a crisscross just because I can. Once again, 71 inch pounds. Uh, the kind of standard go-to on this for the smaller bolts. But uh. Yeah, I decided to go for the style points here, so we'll, we'll go ahead and crisscross, but it's really not that important on something like this. But We'll do that, and then we're getting real close to being uh, buttoned up and ready to drop this back in the frame, which is good because we're getting tired of pushing that big old Ranger chassis back and forth every day. Uh, they're kind of heavy. Okay, and once again, we're just going to go around in order. Make sure that we didn't forget any. 
Okay, that all looks good. That's good. That's good. All right, now we'll flip it around and we're going to put the sprocket cover on because we've already timed it up, put the tensioner in, torque the bolts, verify the timing and that. So we're ready to reinstall this. So this one has a gasket as well. Cover's nice and clean. We'll go ahead and reinstall this. And once again, 71 inch pounds. Okay, it's got that buttoned up. Now we'll go ahead and put our water line on while we're here and get this finished up. We try to get as much stuff as we possibly can installed on the engine before we put it back in because it kind of makes it difficult to reach some items uh, once the engine's in there. So we'll pull them as complete as we can because most of this stuff is easier to get off once it's on the bench anyway so uh, it just kind of saves a little time I'm just tightening the clamp here Snug. All right. Now let's go ahead and we're going to put the starter on. Actually, let's go ahead and put this thermostat in. Take the thermostat, goes in like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit. This does not have a gasket. I'm going to put just a little bit of sealer on this cover. Uh, just for giggles. Uh, I don't want any inside it though. But just a thin coating on here just to help it. Now keep in mind which way uh, this fitting was sitting. The fitting was sitting. Which way this fitting was clocked on your machine. Now this is a Ranger so this one goes up because of the way the engine mounts. If you're doing this on a four-wheeler uh, Sportsman 500, a 425 Magnum, that fitting may actually be pointed in a different direction or it may not even look like this. That is one thing that will be different or it can be different on these engines. So keep in mind if uh, you're working on something other than a Ranger, that fitting is probably not going straight up because, well, in a four wheeler, that would put it hitting the bottom of the gas tank. So it's going to be going some direction other than this. Or it may, like I said, it may not look exactly like this at all. So, once again, we'll tighten this up to our 71 inch pounds. Sound like a broken record, but there's a lot of bolts. Okay, now we're going to install our starter. It goes down here. Let me move the camera. There we go. You see, I'm tearing my tearing my rags all up. Here's the starter. Now we're going to get just a little bit of engine oil. I'm just going to dip it my finger in there. And we're just going to coat this o-ring a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to slide in there. All right. I'm going to take this. 
stick it in there, push it in until it stops, and we'll install the mounting bolts. And then you guess it, what's the torque on these mounting bolts? They're six millimeter with an eight millimeter head. That's right, Crime Stoppers, that was 71 inch pounds. Alright, so we'll put those in. Tighten those up. You got it. Now I think that's pretty much all we've got on this side other than the oil lines. So we'll go ahead and get those ready and install those. I did not clean them yet, so I will be right back. Okay, we're back and I've got the lines cleaned and we're going to install them now on the engine. Now, important to note, uh, the bolts have a sealing washer on each end. You should have one on each side of the fitting. So, we're going to push that down. So, now I've got the bolt, a washer, the line, and another washer. I'm going to slide that on here. And we'll install the line but you're gonna have to have this pretty much not down on here in order to get it to line up properly so we'll do that if I can get it to start you just want to barely start it because you got to get them both in there like at the same time or it won't fit it is a very precise fit now we'll take this bolt with the washer the washer in there put the bolt through it and start it in come on now These are replacement sealing washers on these, and they have a rubber insert in the middle of them. They seal just fine, but it makes it really, really tight to try to thread the bolt in. The other ones you'll see will go in easily by hand, but these, and, and yours should as well, unless they've been replaced with uh, ones with the rubber insert. We'll just tighten that down, and we're going to, the torque on this is going to be, yes. Uh, just get them good and snug uh, there is an actual published torque value on it but uh, I didn't it didn't seem adequate to me because it was like well about the 71 inch pounds like normal to me that's going to be a little bit loose so I'm just tightening them up to where they're good and snug uh, I don't think there's I mean you don't want to just go crazy these are banjo bolts so they're hollow uh, but they are also steel bolts, so I mean, other than the fact you're screwing into aluminum, uh, there's not, unless you just go crazy, there's not much of a chance you're going to break anything or strip anything as long as you go good and straight. But uh, definitely get those, get those snug. That is a, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but those, uh, those are 17 millimeter bolts. All right, now we'll take the next one. This is the long one that fits over the other one. We'll flip it over the right way. Same thing, a washer, the fitting, the line, and a washer. So you're going to sandwich the bolt, the washer, the line, the other washer, and into the block. So we'll tighten that up. And you can see these go in much easier. I can just hand tighten them in. And yours should go the same way unless your fittings have been changed with the rubber inserts. The rubber inserts seal real good. But they're kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to put them together. Because they do, uh, you do have to put them in with a wrench. So, you know, we'll put this in there. And get that nice and snugly. And I'm happy with that now that's all of this complete now the only thing we need to do 
is not knock all this stuff off the bench for one. Uh, we just need to uh, remove these two temporary bolts that I put in the, the cover over here. We're going to put some sealer on it and fully install our mag cover. So let me just take these out. cover off and I need to clean this out real quick I'll be right back okay we're back we're ready to install the stator cover mag cover alternator cover you've heard me refer to it as different things or all of those during the course of these videos they're all the same thing I'm just gonna put uh, this does not have a gasket so we're just gonna put a light coating of ultra black RTV on here to keep the water and goop out and as you can see it with the condition of the of the flywheel and everything inside here, it's sealed up pretty well. So uh, we're gonna make sure it stays sealed up like that, uh, so we don't get water and stuff in there to those important electronic components. So it's just like everything else. We're just gonna put a light coating of uh, the ultra black on there. get that where it's ready to install and then that's pretty much going to be a wrap on this engine uh, it's going to be ready to put back into the back into the Ranger and then if I can remember to do it there is a break-in procedure that we always follow we do it for the customer uh, because a lot of times the customers will fail to do it properly which can result in premature engine failure uh, when you buy one from buy one brand new from the dealer uh, the factory has already done the break-in procedure so that's why you can just go out and drive it however you want but uh, for us we have to do that in addition so if I could remember to film it I'll try to film the uh, how to do heat cycles and properly break your engine in and not actually break it so I'm gonna grab just a bit of grease here uh, just like we did on the one side of the starter drive, we want to do it here as well. That's going to go into uh, this bushing, just this bronze bushing that's here for your starter drive. And fun fact, while I've got it here, that little tip that we saw when we were looking inside there to uh, check the timing and see, make sure that our flywheel's on TDC, you can see it where it's cast into uh, the cover right there. So that's what it looks like from the other side now. We're going to install this cover, just like so. Should just slide on there. There's nothing really to seat up, so or to line up rather, other than the starter drive itself. We're going to place our cover mounting bolts. And we'll be torquing these to, you guessed it, 71 inch pounds. So. Uh, just as is everything it's kind of rip a, a bit of repetition there but all right so we got those in uh, as I wrap up here I would just like to thank everybody that watched the video if you found it helpful please leave a like uh, if you'd like to see make sure you see more of our content you can hit the subscribe button it really helps us out it helps us build our channel it's free to you uh, if you want to, after you subscribe, if you'd like to make sure you're the first to know when we post new content, uh, feel free to hit that notification bell. That way you'll receive a message the moment we upload new content. And you can see, check that out and see what it is. We also take uh, viewer requests. Uh, if you leave them in the comments, tell me something that you'd like to see uh, maybe us work on or a particular repair that you'd like to see. We'll do our best to accommodate that. We are a working shop, and every machine that you see us working on is a customer unit. So we don't have a lot of control over what comes in and what we're doing, but we do take all of those suggestions uh, as we can get them, and we get a, a unit that will fit that 
suggestion we will certainly film that and get it out there for you so uh if you think you've got some buddies or something that might get some help out of this video feel free to share this video uh, in the meantime, if you want to shoot us an email or something, you can catch us on the web at www.jwsrepairservices.com. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye!